In most of my videos, I do stuff that I want people to try at home. But in this particular video, I don't think you should try it unless you are super familiar with high voltage and transformers. As my college physics professor put it, if something goes wrong, it will kill you dead. All right, let's discuss this project. I know I'm only gonna use this about once or twice a year, so I wanted a pretty inexpensive uh, container to put the, the microwave transformer in. This tactical ammo box from Harbor Freight uh, is gonna work out quite well. Uh, inside, there is enough room for the microwave oven transformer, as well as the contactor that I'm gonna use to turn the power on and off to the transformer. The, uh, the wires I'm using are special high voltage rated uh, insulation, so I really don't need to worry too much about them uh, arcing through the insulation. Um, the reason why I use a contactor is that I want to uh, interrupt the power to the transformer on both the, the neutral and the, the line uh, legs to it. So I want to open them both up when the uh, I stop pressing the buttons. Um, this uh, this works quite well because the contactor is isolated from the the transformer. So even if there even if something does go wrong, uh, I'm pretty well protected. The the buttons that turn the the contactor on are right here. I wanted to make sure that the the buttons were farther apart than I could physically press with one hand so that I would need to press each one uh, <laughs> press one with each hand and keep my hands away from any high voltage uh, that may occur. So I know that this box is, is kind of flimsy and it wasn't something that I could bolt a transformer to. So I went ahead and cut a uh, piece of plywood to size so that I could uh, bolt everything down and have it be pretty sturdy. When I carry this around, uh, the weight of it keeps it down on the bottom. I'm not gonna tip it over too much, so I really don't need to, to strap it down in addition to this. Um, so this is going to work out good, especially for how often I'm going to use this. Also worth noting is that I have two AC inputs. Uh, the AC that goes to the transformer is uh, going to go through the relay, but it's separate because I want to use a variac on it um, that has an internal fuse, and I can have more control over that. Uh, the second AC power input down here is just to power the, the relay contactor. Uh, that line uh, input goes straight into the fuse. That's the first place it goes. The wire goes from the fuse in series through both buttons, then to the coil of the contactor. So this allows me to uh, use both buttons. Uh, they both have to be pressed. They're normally open. Uh, when they're both pressed, only then will this pick and apply power to the microwave oven transformer.
Alright, I saw this on a different YouTube video and I thought it was a great idea. I've got a PVC pipe that's attached to a 2x4 and at the end is the, the screw that I used, uh, but I would recommend using nails instead of screws because it's easier to clean. Um, but this allows the, the, the screw to make contact with the wood and it holds it down nice and tight so that I don't have to touch any of this while it's on. Both my hands are going to be pressing the buttons on top of the box, and so this holds the, uh, the screw into the wood. I think I'll go ahead and replace this screw with a nail, and maybe I'll get a little bit better performance out of that. But uh, so far, this is working quite well. All right, I went ahead and did a, a test burn on a solid piece of wood here. Uh, I did notice that it was a little bit difficult to get the arc to start, and I drenched this wood in baking soda and water, uh, about a one to three mixture ratio. And what I noticed though is that when the arc starts, it, it evaporates all of the water around it, and then it's hard to uh, continue burning the wood. Uh, that's why I drenched it so much. Um, for some reason, I uh, you, you might be able to see this uh, darker color, and I've already tried to sand as much away as I could, but the darker color is actually a stain that, that occurred from the baking soda. So next time I do this, I'm going to rinse off all of the baking soda right after the burn is complete, and hopefully that will uh, keep it from staining as much. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you have any comments or suggestions on how I can improve my Lichtenberg fractal burning, please mention it in the comments below. Thank you so much and be safe.